A big story developing this Saturday after days of suspense. U.S. President Donald Trump ordered military strikes against the Assad regime in Syria. Allies France and the United Kingdom joined American forces and carried out strikes in Homs and Damascus. Syrian research, storage and military targets have been destroyed in these strikes. This move is an attempt to punish Syrian President Bashar al-Assad for a suspected chemical weapons attack in Douma last weekend. That strike killed more than 70 people. A scientific research center in Greater Damascus and two chemical weapons facilities west of Homs were struck down. The research center in Damascus was reportedly used to produce weapons, while the facility in Homs was reportedly used to produce nerve agent sarin. My fellow Americans, a short time ago, I ordered the United States Armed Forces to launch precision strikes on targets associated with the chemical weapons capabilities of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. A combined operation with the armed forces of France and the United Kingdom is now underway. We thank them both. Tonight, I want to speak with you about why we have taken this action. One year ago, Assad launched a savage chemical weapons attack against his own innocent people. The United States responded with 58 missile strikes that destroyed 20 percent of the Syrian Air Force. Last Saturday, the Assad regime again deployed chemical weapons to slaughter innocent civilians, this time in the town of Doma, near the Syrian capital of Damascus. This massacre was a significant escalation in a pattern of chemical weapons use by that very terrible regime. The evil and the despicable attack left mothers and fathers, infants and children thrashing in pain and gasping for air. These are not the actions of a man. They are crimes of a monster instead. Following the horrors of World War I a century ago, civilized nations joined together to ban chemical warfare. Chemical weapons are uniquely dangerous, not only because they inflict gruesome suffering, but because even small amounts can unleash widespread devastation. The purpose of our actions tonight is to establish a strong deterrent against the production, spread, and use of chemical weapons. Establishing this deterrent is a vital national security interest of the United States. The combined American, British, and French response to these atrocities will integrate all instruments of our national power, military, economic, and diplomatic. We are prepared to sustain this response until the Syrian regime stops its use of prohibited chemical agents. I also have a message tonight for the two governments most responsible for supporting, equipping, and financing the criminal Assad regime. To Iran and to Russia, I ask, what kind of a nation wants to be associated with the mass murder of innocent men, women, and children. The nations of the world can be judged by the friends they keep. No nation can succeed in the long run by promoting rogue states, brutal tyrants, and murderous dictators. In 2013, President Putin and his government promised the world that they would guarantee the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons. Assad's recent attack and today's response are the direct result of Russia's failure to keep that promise. Russia must decide if it will continue down this dark path or if it will join with civilized nations as a force for stability and peace. Hopefully, someday, we'll get along with Russia and maybe even Iran, but maybe not. I will say this.
the United States has a lot to offer. With the greatest and most powerful economy in the history of the world. In Syria, the United States, with but a small force being used to eliminate what is left of ISIS, is doing what is necessary to protect the American people. Over the last year, nearly 100 percent of the territory, once controlled by the so-called ISIS caliphate, in Syria and Iraq, has been liberated and eliminated. The United States has also rebuilt our friendships across the Middle East. We have asked our partners to take greater responsibility for securing their home region, including contributing large amounts of money for the resources, equipment, and all of the anti-ISIS effort. Increased engagement from our friends, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Egypt, and others, can ensure that Iran does not profit from the eradication of ISIS. America does not seek an indefinite presence in Syria under no circumstances. As other nations step up their contributions, we look forward to the day when we can bring our warriors home, and great warriors they are. Looking around our very troubled world, Americans have no illusions. We cannot purge the world of evil or act everywhere there is tyranny. No amount of American blood or treasure can produce lasting peace and security in the Middle East. It's a troubled place. We will try to make it better, but it is a troubled place. The United States will be a partner and a friend, but the fate of the region lies in the hands of its own people. In the last century, we looked straight into the darkest places of the human soul. We saw the anguish that can be unleashed and the evil that can take hold. By the end of World War I, more than one million people had been killed or injured by chemical weapons. We never want to see that ghastly specter return. So today, the nations of Britain, France, and the United States of America have marshaled their righteous power against barbarism and brutality. Tonight, I ask all Americans to say a prayer for our noble warriors and our allies as they carry out their missions. We pray that God will bring comfort to those suffering in Syria. We pray that God will guide the whole region toward a future of dignity and of peace. And we pray that God will continue to watch over and bless the United States of America. Thank you and good night. Thank you. So we're looking at what happens next now. Let's go straight to Moscow. We on correspondent Daria Bondarchuk standing by there. Daria, the first question is, was Russia in the know? Was Russia tipped off about the impending strikes? Well, apparently, according to the U.S. military, uh, Russia was not advised about uh, these uh, strikes. Uh, however, none of the uh, elements of the Russian infrastructure, military uh, bases uh, and uh, servicemen deployed in Syria apparently have not been targeted by these uh, strikes. Russian Defense Ministry, in a briefing earlier today, said that um, none of the missiles fired at Syria have come into entered the zone of the Russian anti-missile defense uh, um, uh, responsibility um, and saying this uh, is indication Russia has not engaged in downing any of the missiles that the US-led coalition has fired on Syria. Russia said, citing uh, Syrian sources, that it, there were over 100 missiles launched and said that um, the majority, a big part of it, has, have been intercepted, including 12 cruise missiles fired um, at one of the airports in Syria. 
Now, the defense ministry issued a statement saying that uh, the uh, minister of defense, Sergei Shoigu, is updating and briefing Russian President Vladimir Putin on the recent developments in Syria. And we've just had a statement from the Kremlin saying it condemns attack on Syria, where Russia helps Damascus fight uh, terror. Uh, certainly, Moscow has denounced uh, these uh, U.S. strikes on Syria earlier today. Diplomatic officials, top diplomats, uh, uh, criticizing the U.S. strikes, saying they they were based on uh, reports that were faked. Uh, that is a reference to uh, recent reports on the alleged chemical attacks in uh, Douma in uh, Syria that happened uh, supposedly on the 7th of um, April. Russia has been saying that those reports, um, footage and photos were fake and forged right. and has called for an investigation into the, cons uh, the circumstances of that event. Right. Daria, the, the, the question then is, uh Moscow has been talking about retaliation. Is Russia going to strike back? Will Tehran strike back is, uh, is what we are looking at. Uh, what are the indications from the Kremlin? Uh, it is unclear at this point there hasn't uh, been um, any indication from the Kremlin nor the Defense Ministry on possible political or military response to these strikes. We are waiting for the Defense Ministry to resume its uh, briefing that began earlier today but then was put on pause. We hope it will um, resume in the next uh, half an hour or so. Uh, we know that Russia previously, uh, some top military and uh, officials and the politicians have said that Russia could target both of these missiles and the means of carrying them um, if they uh, are hitting uh, Syria and if Russian servicemen or military facilities deployed in Syria uh, are hit by these strikes. So far we see that this has not happened uh, but uh, Russian ambassador to the U.S. Anatoly Antonov did say uh, that uh, these uh, strikes will not be uh, will not go without a response and saying that the uh, uh, response Responsibility for the consequences uh, of these strikes lies with Washington, Paris, and London. Uh, Daria, is it possible to have an independent assessment of the damage done? Because the Syrian uh, official agencies are saying that three people have been injured for the coordinated strikes and hundred missiles that NATO allies have uh, have rained down on Syria. That's very little damage, some would say. Others say that chemical facilities have sustained a significant damage. Uh, do we know for sure? what has been struck and how much of the target has been achieved. Well, Russian Defense Ministry has been uh, saying uh, uh, that uh, from the ground, what well, it looks on the ground there in Syria, uh, that uh, the airport of Damascus has not been hit, that uh, missile attacks on uh, the Damascus airport have been uh, averted. Uh, also, that the, generally there were some areas hit in Damascus, but uh, the Russian embassy, at least there, is, was not hit, was not damaged, and continues to function as uh, usual. Uh, Russia also said that there have so far we have not heard any reports about any casualties on the uh, side of the Russian Federation among the people living or deployed in uh, Syria helping uh, fighting ISIS there uh, so at this point uh, we um, are hearing reports from the defense ministry that apparently the Syrian aer aerial defense systems have been quite successful in deterring a large amount of uh, attacks of strikes that were coming down. Uh, it said uh, over 100 missiles were launched on uh, Syria and that um, a great part of it were intercepted, including 12 cruise missiles um, at one of the airports in uh, Syria. Right, Daria Bondarchuk, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining us and updating us on what uh the position is in Moscow. We're waiting for uh, an official statement as well. Everyone apparently knew that the missiles were coming. Russia, we believe, was informed in advance. That's according to the French government. And Russia, in turn, tipped off Syria. So U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has called the strikes a one-time event and said that there are no additional attacks planned. Tonight, separately, demonstrates international resolve to prevent chemical weapons from being used on anyone under any circumstance in contravention of international law. I want to emphasize that these strikes are directed at the Syrian regime. In conducting these strikes, we have gone to great lengths to avoid civilian. But it is a time for all civilized nations to urgently unite in ending the Sy Syrian civil war 
by supporting the United Nations back Geneva peace process. UK Prime Minister Theresa May strongly backed the U.S. airstrike, saying that it was the only alternative left to deter Syria from using chemical weapons further. I have authorised British armed forces to conduct coordinated and targeted strikes to degrade the Syrian regime's chemical weapons capability and deter their use. We are acting together with our American and French allies. In Douma last Saturday, a chemical weapons attack killed up to 75 people, including young children, in circumstances of pure horror. The fact of this attack should surprise no one. France hit out at the Syrian regime blaming Bashar al-Assad for breaking international law. The French foreign minister said, and I quote, these different means fired cruise missiles at the chosen targets in close coordination with our British and American partners. We do not seek confrontation and we refuse any possibility of military escalation. We had ensured that the Russians were warned beforehand. Cette action est proportionnée et ciblée. Elle ne cherche pas à atteindre les alliés d'Assad, ni la population civile, mais à dissuader le régime syrien de poursuivre ses actions criminelles. Le régime de Damas doit cesser d'employer de telles armes. French President Emmanuel Macron in a statement said that France's red line has been crossed after a suspected chemical attack in Douma. Macron said that the airstrikes were limited to Syria's abilities to produce chemical weapons. The French presidency has also tweeted a video showing what it said were Rafale fighter jets taking off for launching attacks in Syria. It was not immediately clear whether the jets were taking off from an aircraft carrier or a military base. The French presidency did not specify from where the planes took off. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for restraint to avoid any acts that could escalate the situation in Syria. He delayed a planned trip to Saudi Arabia to deal with the aftermath of the U.S.-led military action in Syria. In a statement, the U.N. chief said, and I quote, I urge all member states to show restraint in these dangerous circumstances and to avoid any acts that could escalate the situation and worsen the suffering of the Syrian people. Moscow, meanwhile, has called for an emergency session of the United Nations Security Council again after the airstrikes in Syria. And this is the latest that we are picking up. Uh, remember, the Russians have called for similar sessions in the past. And this basically shows that Moscow may not be looking at an immediate military retaliation. It has called for a special session of the United Nations Security Council to discuss what happened in Syria. Hundreds of Syrians, meanwhile, took to the streets in Damascus this morning, condemning the airstrike. Syrian town of Atarib and Idlib also saw protests. Some videos on social media websites showed demonstrations. And these are people carrying flags, protest signs, some wearing face masks to denounce the airstrikes by the Western parts. Let's talk about the other big player in this equation, Iran. The staunch ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has strongly condemned the U.S.-led airstrikes. Iran has warned of regional consequences after this attack. Here is what uh, the Iranian state agency had to say, and I quote, the attack is the blatant violation of international law as well as ignoring the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Syria. Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, allegedly armed and funded by Iran, has also condemned the U.S. military action. The group issued a statement, and I'm quoting again, the vicious attack on Syria is a blatant violation of the Syrian sovereignty and its people's dignity. The attack represents direct and forthright support to terrorist and criminal gangs which have been for years sponsored and funded. The West has repeatedly interfered in a bid to uphold these terrorists whenever they were defeated. Let's listen on to listen into how West Asia experts are seeing these latest strikes on Syria. 
Well, one hopes that this strike will have both political and military impact on the Assad regime, as well as Assad's foreign backers, which the president mentioned, Russia and Iran, as well as the various Shia militias that are rampant and buoy Assad's forces across the country. In reality, because the strike was a signal of resolve against Assad and limited to the chemical weapons production, procurement, development facilities, it's likely that there will need to be future mowing of the grass, if I have to be so frank, to deter uh, Assad, uh, both to deter Assad at home, as well as to deter Russia and Iran from continuing to bolster the Assad regime. In the April 2017 strike, the U.S. went after the A delivery mechanism, military jets, as well as an airstrip. This time they went after the uh, procu uh, production centers, which is the scientific and technical and industrial base for them. I think combining the two would have been actually a little bit more appropriate, as well as going after other chemical weapons delivery systems, such as helicopters from which barrel bombs can be dropped, as well as even artillery shells, because there has been chemical weapons use in the Syrian theater via artillery shells. I think the U.S. definitely wanted to focus on the ke chemical weapons issue and not get tangled into what are the political and military ramifications of Assad's uh, partnership with Russia and Iran. You've seen the anger on uh, Syrian streets. What about America? Do people in America support their government's decision to strike in Syria? Listen in to some reactions that we got for you from Washington, D.C. It's my opinion that uh, violence is never the answer to anything. War is never the answer. Shooting, dropping bombs is never the answer. Imagine if someone dropped a bomb right here in Times Square right now. Does that seem like that's the right answer? No, it's not. And the fact that people think it's okay to kill other people just boggles my mind. I think there is always a diplomatic solution. I don't agree with missile attacks, but I don't agree with the chemical warfare either. I think out of the two, the chemical warfare is the one that called onto the missile attacks. I don't agree with that. I think it's harmful to people. Um, but uh, I really do hope that we don't get too far into a hole that we, we lose ourselves as a nation and what we stand for. This is a developing story and remains the biggest story that we're tracking today on Beyond as more reactions come in and we look at the repercussions of the U.S.-led strikes on Syria.